If you run a business, everyone starts off with a goal, whether it's four to five sales calls per day, acquiring more clients, growing your business revenue, growing your sales, getting good client results and retaining them for long periods of time. Everyone has goals above the iceberg, but if we look beneath the iceberg, it comes in with its own set of problems, right? Rejection, manly cold calling, draining your energy, sending your personalized loom videos that never get watched, your offer not working, you're sending cold emails, not getting replies, you're jumping from one thing to another because you don't have the patience. Your close rate is low, right? You're not closing as many clients as you can. You're trying to train people, a VA appointment setter to do the work for you. You don't have enough time. You maybe hire a lead gen agency. You're not doing enough volume or you're not sure where to even find your leads. With every single goal that we set for ourselves, we will always, always have our own set of problems in attaining that goal, right? And what we need to understand is essentially how to deal with these problems. Because if we just let these problems sit, right, we will begin to procrastinate. We will never ever come to solve these problems, right? And we'll never achieve our goal. So we need to learn how to deal with each and every single problem, just like this, before we are able to attain our goal of four to five sales calls per day or whatever that is. And this is what I want to cover in today's video. I want to be able to share my own problem solving framework that I use almost on a daily basis to solve any problem that comes my way, right? Because business is essentially just being good at making decisions, avoiding bad decisions, and being able to solve problems, right, effectively. So before we get into that, let's actually understand what problem solving looks like. Now, it's wrong to assume that you know, problem solving is a streamlined process where you have a problem, you find a solution, you fix it, and you attain your goal, right? This is not what problem solving looks like. It looks more like something like this, right? It looks like weird scribbles, just like this on the board. We have a problem here, right? We start trying to find a solution. We go back, we didn't solve it. We try something else, try something else, try something else, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, right? And then, effectively find the right solution and solve our problem, right? This is what you have to understand about problem solving is that it's not just a streamlined process from point A to point B. It's gonna look more like this and you have to be able to embrace it, right? Because if you are stuck in a fairy tale that problem solving is easy, then you will never ever solve them, right? Because you're gonna try to solve a problem you're gonna realize that it's not as easy as it looks and then you're gonna quit or procrastinate. So just in your head, embed this idea that problem solving just kind of looks something like this, like a crazy person drawing something on the whiteboard. But to make your life easier, I wanna also be able to solve the most common problems agencies and B2B businesses face for you in this video. We're gonna look at three different aspects of your business, client acquisition, sales and service delivery, right? Because each of these aspects is going to come with its own set of problems. And you need to be able to basically understand the framework that you can implement in order to solve these problems and get closer to your goals. But before we get into that, let's actually understand how problems are solved. So let's say we have a big fat problem coming our way, right? Whether it's something not working out, whether we are nowhere near to where we want it to be, right, in a certain time frame, we all have problems just sitting there on our head, right? Now, there's two paths that you can take when it comes to facing this problem. You can sit down and dwell on it and procrastinate because it's painful to solve. Our brains just, you know, for some reason, not for some reason, it's understandable why our brains don't like hard things, right? So. Whenever we have a problem, our brain just wants to avoid that problem. We don't want to face it, right? So what a lot of people tend to do is whenever they have a problem, they just sit on it. They distract themselves by watching Netflix, by watching TikToks, Instagram Reels, maybe watching Imangaji videos for some you know, fake motivation, right? We just let this problem just sit and grow and grow and grow and grow until we essentially just quit. We can also take another path and actually solve the problem. So how does this actually work? How do we actually solve the problem? Let me actually show you my framework. 
So we want to be able to sit down and break the problem apart, right? Let's say we have a major problem, right? Just not getting enough clients or not getting enough sales calls in our calendar. We want to take this problem and instead of trying to solve this problem all at once, we want to break it down into small different bottlenecks, right? Let's say we have three different bottlenecks that cause this major problem. Let's look at the first bottleneck. What do we actually do with this? We want to write this down in our journal, right? And I literally do this every time I have something big, you know, happening, like every time I have a huge problem that is just stopping me from getting to my goals. I simply sit down, I whip out my journal and I just brainstorm, right? I just sit down, have that major problem written down on top of the page, and then have that minor bottleneck written below that. And then I sit down and in bullet points, write out every single thing I can do in order to solve that problem. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it doesn't make sense, if it's just a bunch of gibberish, right? Because I want to let my brain basically get into that mode of thinking of solutions, right? Because a solution is sitting somewhere in your brain. You just haven't discovered it, right? So what this does is basically it forces your brain to, you know, get into this drive of thinking of different possible solutions. So once I write down all my solutions, let's say I have like 10 to 20 different solutions I can implement to solve this bottleneck, I'm going to pick the top three I can execute on today, right? Something that is not hard to do, something that I can execute on today. So if I don't know how to execute on these solutions, or if, I just, if I'm just missing the knowledge to be able to do that, I will simply try and find, you know, YouTube videos, uh, articles and different resources that can help me understand how to execute that solution. Right? If I'm missing the knowledge of you know that solution and how to execute it, then I'll basically just sit down and research different ways in which I can execute upon that solution. So once I do execute it, right? Let's say I have three solutions here. I'm gonna pick one, right? Which I think will solve my minor bottleneck. And then I'll go ahead and execute it for a certain time frame. Let's say I execute it and I let it run for two weeks. Then I get my results and data, right? I track my data, I track my numbers, and I see if I made an improvement, right? If I haven't made an improvement, then I move on to the next solution. But basically the way this works is once I get my data, I'll ask myself, did I get better? Am I in the same place or did I get worse? If I didn't get better or I'm in the same place, I'll go back to my previous solutions and I'll try the next one, right? And I'll keep doing that until I'm able to improve. If I did improve on that minor bottleneck and I was actually able to solve it, then I'm going to move on to the next one and repeat the process again, right? And this essentially becomes like a, almost like a cycle, right? Problem comes in, you break the, down that problem into you know minor problems, you sit down, think of solutions, you execute those solutions, you fix those minor problems until you fix the major problem, right? And once you fix that major problem, in the future, if that problem comes again, you know, you will exactly know how to basically solve it because you found a solution and that solution will most likely work again in the future if that problem ever arises again, right? This is why over time, uh, if you notice like, you know, for example, with myself, like two years ago, if I had a problem, right, that I have right now, like let's say the same problem for two years ago, you know, I'm experiencing it right now, but I was able to solve that problem like two years ago, I'm gonna be able to solve that problem way quicker now, right? Because I've done it before, I found the solution before, so I basically just re-implement that solution again, right? Compared to, you know, two years ago when that first problem just you know, came for the first time, I didn't really know what solution I could implement. So I had to, you know, try different things until I was able to find something that works, right? Now, when it comes to problems, like just for you to visualize it, you can think of it as a pipe, right? A pipe where water flows from point A to point B. If you do have problems and these minor bottlenecks, the water starts to leak out over time. And by the time the water goes into point B, you'll basically have no more water left, right? And you're gonna be left dehydrated. So your job with these minor bottlenecks is to basically close these gaps, 
I close these gaps one by one, right? You close these gaps and then suddenly the water starts flowing all the way to point B, right? And you're left hydrated, right? So this is how you can think of uh, problems within your business. There's a simple framework uh, that you can implement. Now, if you want me to actually sit down with you and talk about your problems and provide you with solutions and a custom roadmap, then I invite you to book a call. If you click on the link in the description below this video, right on the call, we'll basically dive into your problems, what you tried so far, details of your offer, and then I'll actually use my internal tool that I use for my business to map out every single step you can take to achieve your ideal revenue mark, your goal, or you know something that will help you solve your problems. So if you wanna to speak to me about you know your current situation with the business, your goals, your problems, then make sure to check out the link in the description to schedule a one-to-one -one roadmap session with me. But yeah, moving on. Let me actually sit down now and solve the most common problems agencies and B2B businesses face. If I break down these businesses, there are three different aspects. How you acquire appointments, right? In your client acquisition aspect of the business, your sales process, how you convert strangers into clients, and your client retention, you know, how long you retain those clients for. Each of these sort of aspects of the business have its own set of problems, but I was able to develop a simple framework that I follow every single time in order to fix all of these problems, no matter what the problem is, right? So, Let's go start off with client acquisition. Let's say my goal is five new clients every month, right? The first thing that you need to do to solve your problems is knowing why you're solving your problems, right? What is your end goal? What are you trying to achieve? Once you have identified that goal, you then wanna map out your current inputs to get to the goal. Essentially, what are you currently doing every single day to get to that goal of five new clients every month? Right, just sit down and be brutally honest with yourself because if you lie to yourself and you put in, you know, you overestimate the inputs that you're doing, then it's going to be hard for you to map out exactly what the bottleneck is, right? So just be honest with yourself and, you know, just sit down and write down what you're currently doing to get to that goal. So let's say right now I'm currently doing cold emails, right? To get to five new clients every month, I'm using cold emails to book appointments. Let's say I'm sending 5,000 emails every single month. Once I've identified my inputs, I can then go on to see what my outputs are, right? So I'll look at my previous data and I'll look at my outputs from my inputs. So let's say my reply rate is 5%. That means I'm getting 250 replies every single month by sending 5,000 emails a month. Let's say my positive response rate is 10%, right? I'm getting 25 interested responses from my replies. Let's say my appointment booking rate is 20%, I'm getting five appointments per month. And let's say my close rate is 20%, I'm closing one new client per month, right? So now you understand your inputs and you understand the outputs that you're getting. And now you can ask yourself like, to these inputs, will these inputs actually get me to my goal? Probably not, right? Because with your current inputs, you're currently outputting one new client every single month. So then, you wanna determine KPIs to get to the goal, right? What do you actually need to change in order to get to your goal of five new clients per month? Now that you have your data, right? Let's say here, we set our KPIs. Five new clients, 20% close rate, we need 25 appointments every single month. Currently, we're getting five appointments per month. So let's look at our data. 5,000 emails sent, we're getting 250 replies. Let's say we keep the 5% reply rate the same, but we work on our positive response rate and actually get 50 interested replies compared to 10%, right? Uh, compared to 25. So from 10%, we get it down to 20%, or we get it to 20%. Let's say we maintain our appointment booking rate the same, right? That's 10 appointments booked, right? So the first sort of goal is to improve our positive response rate to 20%. And then what we can also do is basically double the volume to get closer to our 25 appointments per month goal, right? So if, let's say, we, we're currently sending 5,000 emails per month, we will manage to get our positive response rate up to 20%, right? And we're booking 10 appointments per month compared to five appointments per month. If we just now double the amount of inputs we're doing in terms of emails, 
we're going to be able to double the amount of appointments we're booking. Right? We're probably going to be able to book 20, you know, 23, 25 appointments through this. So right now, we know that the main leaks within our pipeline stopping us from getting to five new clients every month is our interested reply rate is just low, right? So we need to you know, maybe improve something within our uh, messaging or our offer and our volume is low, right? So we need to do something about when it comes to increasing the volume. And now, now that you know the two sort of, you know, minor bottlenecks to a bigger problem that you're not getting five new clients a month, you sit down and you brainstorm different solutions, right? So positive response rate, what can we do to improve our PRR, right? We can test a new offer. We can test new messaging frameworks, right? We could segment our lead list better and make sure that we're being hyper-targeted with our messaging, our offer, right? That would probably improve the amount of people that are interested in us. And then once we basically solve this first minor bottleneck, we move on to the second one, right? More volume. So what can we do to be able to send double the amount we're currently sending? Simply buy more accounts, right? We simply just have to buy more accounts, right? So you can approach this when it comes to like, you know, not getting enough appointments, um, you know, not signing enough clients, right? You can approach this framework almost every single time. Identify your goal, identify your current inputs, identify your current outputs, reverse engineer your KPIs, find the main leaks within your pipeline, and brainstorm different solutions for these minor bottlenecks that once fixed will lead you to getting closer to your goal. So same thing with sales, right? Let's say again, your goal is to close five new clients per month. Your current inputs to get to the call is, you know, let's say you're taking 30 sales calls per month. Now, what are you getting out of those 30 sales calls? Right, let's say 12 people don't show up, right? 40% no-show rate, you're getting 18 live calls. Let's say 20% are unqualified, means you're taking 15 qualified calls. And let's say your close rate is 20%, meaning you're closing three new clients per month. Now let's figure out our KPIs, right? So maybe if we're able to increase our close rate to 30%, we're gonna be able to close four to five new clients compared to three new clients, right? Or if we simply just increase the amount of calls that we're taking, right? Instead of taking 30 calls per month, we actually do 40 calls a month with our current metrics, we're gonna be able to close five new clients per month. So the two main leaks within our pipeline is you know, the close rate can be improved or we can increase our volume to 40 calls per month. You then think of solutions, right? How do we improve our close rate? Maybe I test a new script. Maybe I change something within my sales process. Maybe I get better at objection handling, right? If you rewatch your call recordings, maybe you're losing a lot of people when it comes to handling a certain objection, right? I remember at some point, um, I was losing a lot of people because I would never ever be able to um, tackle the think about it objection, right? Just for some reason, you know, that think about it objection was like my worst enemy. So what did I do? I figured that out, figured that I need to get better at handling that specific objection. And then I basically started doing more role play sessions. I researched different, you know, sales YouTubers to try and basically find a way to develop a think about it objection handling framework. And then I've actually implemented that framework into my sales calls, right? So if you want to improve your close rate, you test new scripts, you get better objection handling, or you do more role play sessions. Maybe it's a matter of you getting more experience, getting more comfortable selling your offer, or you simply increase the call volume to 40 calls per month, right? And then you can then go back to this here, right? To see how you can increase your call volume to 40 per month, right? Next is client retention. Right. So let's say our goal is to retain clients for longer by providing better results. And let's say on average, you're currently getting six appointments per month and you want to be able to provide 15 appointments per month, right? Because the more opportunities you bring for your clients, the more um, chances they have to close more clients for themselves and the more money you make them, the longer they will stay with you, right? Because when it comes to working with clients, they will never ever leave you unless you're not working out for them. Right, unless you're not providing them with a certain outcome, whether making them more money or saving them more money, right? So 
let's do this again, right? Same framework. Current inputs, let's say $1,000 ad spend that the client is spending with you. What are we outputting through that $1,000 ad spend? Let's say we're getting 66 leads per month, right? We're getting a $15 cost per lead. Our current lead to appointment rate is 10%. So we're getting six new appointments per month. And let's say we hit, the client has a 20% close rate. So they close one new client per month. So what can we do to get to 15 appointments per month? Now, two different options here, right? We can either decrease our cost per lead to $7 and get 142 new leads per month. And whilst maintaining a 10% lead to appointment rate, we have 14, 15 new appointments per month, right? Or we can increase our lead to appointment rate, right? So you can even solve these two minor bottlenecks, right? First solve the cost per lead and then move on to increasing the lead to appointment rate. Or you can just do one of these, right? Let's say B, you're spending $1,000 a month, you're getting $15 cost per leads, but you've managed to increase your lead to appointment rate from 10% to 25%. Right? So now you're getting 15, 16 new appointments per month, or let's say you figured out how to uh, lower your cost per lead, right? So the main leaks within our pipeline is basically the cost per lead could be lower and your lead to appointment rate could be higher, right? And now you basically brainstorm different solutions, right? So if I was to do it right now, let's say cost per lead, right? I'm just gonna sit down and think about what I can do to lower my cost per lead, right? I could test better offers. Uh, test better creatives. Um, okay. Now, let's say, how do we? Now, what can I do to increase my lead to appointment rate, right? More email and SMS workflows, right? Right. So let's say these are the potential solutions that I could implement, right? And what I'm going to do now, whether I want to improve my cost per lead or my lead to appointment rate, first thing I'm going to do is test better offers, right? I'm going to test that. I'm going to run that for like, let's say a couple of days and see if that makes a difference. If that doesn't work, I'm going to test better creatives, right? And change my creatives. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to try being more hyper specific. So rather than you know, let's say going after uh, male and female audiences, I'm only going to, you know, go after male audiences or female audiences. And my ad copy and creative will be more specific uh, to, you know, that specific client avatar. Uh, test better ad copies or analyze more competitors and find out what's working for them. Or let's say lead to appointment rate, what, what could I do to basically increase that? Maybe I can put more email and SMS workflows or improve on them. Maybe I can place a setter to that, the leads within five minutes. Uh, and then maybe, you know, I could just have a better incentive for the leads to book an appointment, right? So then what you do is basically, now you have a plan to execute and you just execute, right? And this way you're never ever going to procrastinate on your problems again, right? Because the reason why you procrastinate on problems is because you don't have a clear sense of direction. When you don't have a clear sense of direction, it's very hard to come up with a sense of direction. So you end up procrastinating on your problems and over time you never ever achieve the goals that you were looking to achieve. But if you truly sit down and, you know, kind of break down the goal and the problems apart and you build out a game plan for yourself and you execute on that game plan, you are going to see improvements. 
right? It's just almost guaranteed that you're going to see improvements compared to you not really doing anything else or, you know, doing everything the same as before, right? So this is literally the problem solving framework that you should follow if you want to solve all of your problems, right? Take a major problem, break it down into minor bottlenecks, think of solutions, journal those solutions, execute those solutions one by one, collect data, ask yourself if, if it's within KPI. If it's not, try another solution. If it's you know within KPI, solve the next bottleneck, solve the next bottleneck, and then solve the major problem, right? And that way you basically leveled up your business, right? Because every problem that you solve that is um, hindering your progress, every time you solve it, you're basically getting to the next level with the business, right? Because next time, again, when that problem arises again, you're going to know how to solve it like almost within a day, right? So A, you leveled up and your experience got better, right? So you're going to be quicker in solving problems in the future. So yeah, um, this has literally been the framework I always use and I get problems thrown at me on a daily basis, right? There's always just something to solve. There's always problems. Um, it's never, you know, rainbow and sunshine and butterflies. It's always, always problems. And it's just a matter of how you deal with these problems. So yeah, I hope this helped. And again, if you want to get your free roadmap session with myself, then check the link in the description um, to maybe book a call with me if you'd like to. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video.